Do you see Ross or do you imagine Ross as an individual separate to you? Like, can if I asked you, how will he react to a certain set of scenarios? What's his thinking on such? Do you just know him as a person or is he every time you stand at the typewriter, you just come up with him afresh? Yeah, no, I think I think at this stage, the, the difficulty for me is not getting his voice into my head. It's getting his voice out of my head. And especially when I'm writing a book like this book, um, I, I, you know, I, I work long days. So, you know, this book was written over the course of three months where I'm working sort of eight to ten hour days with Ross's voice in my head all the time. So I know. It's not healthy for a man, Paul. It's not, you know, and and, and this is what I do for a living. Um, But yeah, I know what Ross thinks about any particular subject. But at the end of the day, I might not know what I think about a particular subject. It must be tricky as well, though, to get that fine balance. I mean, I, I, I know it's a, it's a bit of an extreme analogy, but the kind of Tony Soprano thing of creating a character who is laden with reprehensible behaviours yeah. that everybody loves. Because Ross is not a nice person. No, I think I think he has. I think there's some sense of a of a of a of a moral compass in him that's working. Um, I think he, you know, has its moments. He does have his moments, you know, and I think, uh, you know, his 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 relationship with his children. He clearly loves his children, and sometimes, completely by accident, he's a good father to them. You know, <laughs> often by accident. As his parents get older, I think he's connecting more and more with them, and he sees them sees them getting older. And I, I think I think that's bringing out a different side of Ross as well. But but yeah, I mean that's the challenge for me because I hated Ross, and I hated I hated people. You know, the first few books were born out of rage about about Ross or Carol Kelly type people, and I didn't see I didn't see the world from from that point of view. And I suppose the longer I went on, you couldn't write about a character for 22 years without without having some kind of empathy for him, without having, you know, without seeing the world from his point of view. And I suppose he's this kid who, you know, he's born into the world. His dad tells him he's going to be the greatest rugby player who ever lived when he's like three years of age. His mother isn't bothered by him. He's sent to the school where he's told he's essentially the second coming of Christ because he can play rugby. And it's... And then he, he, he wins the school's cup, but nothing happens after that. Does it need to is, though after that? <laughs> well, yeah, but or does it? And that's the that's what's sort of kept me going right in Ross. It's like, what happens to this kid when he's prepared for this lifetime of glory and stardom and all the rest? And and he, his life sort of falls off a cliff. It never gets better than it was at 18 years of age. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I suppose the job for me with every book is how do I make people pull for him?